Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will try to learn about the uh, browser specific APIs, how to execute the browser specific APIs in the Angular SSR. So normally when you are trying to run Angular on the server, so using the Angular SSR or using the Angular Universal, whatever it may be, certain browser specific APIs are unavailable because the server does not have a DOM or a browser environment. So example of such unavailable objects include window, document, navigator, HTML element properties like scroll height. So these type of properties which you are trying to use the browser specific DOM elements. So these, these things will not be available when you are trying to do the Angular specific thing. For example, let's say that you are in the app. Let's say that you are in the app dot component dot ts. Let's assume so here in this one. So now in this ng on init, when you are trying to access the window or anything, so it will not be available. So here you will try to access console or log of window. So it will not be available. So now if you try to check the same output for this one, so now you will be able to see an error, most probably. I don't know so whether you will be able to see the error or not I am trying to refresh this page okay so we are able to get the window I don't know how we are able to get the window so he some some browser specific APIs will not be there so for example let's say that uh, window is available let's say that in the app dot component HTML let's say I am having a div okay hash element let's say and if I want to access this uh, element means maybe this could not be available according to me if I try to use the view child of <coughs> if I access this one so using the view child concept uh, in such a way that uh, that element if I try to access this element using the uh, I will give the element only and which is of type element ref okay element ref that's it so here if I try to access this one and here if let's try to get this element whether we can able to access this time or not. Let's see whether we can able to access this one or not. Now if you see the example see property element has no initial and is definitely assigned in the constructor. So we are able to get it as an undefined. So now how we can able to get this element. So let's try to see. So some of the elements like windows and all those things are HTML elements will not be available. Angular for this reason angular provides a specific lifecycle hooks like after render and after next render So we have already covered about this after render and after next render a lifecycle hook in our angular course This angular 19 course only so to handle code that should only execute in the browser so now So we need to use the after next render for this one So what it will try to do it is it will delay the execution until angular finishes uh, rendering the view in the browser So I will try to show you one simple example uh, let's say that here I will be having some simple HTML. Uh, let's say I will be showing some simple HTML and I will try to keep it at the bottom this one. Okay. So authorizing this one class this is some content whose height we want to calculate it only works in the browser. So I want to calculate this height. So for this one what I can do it is so here I will try to get the content of element and here I will try to give some CSS also. So let's say that in this content I will give the CSS like this. Now here let's go to the output and let's see the output how it will look like. So here we are able to see and this content height I, I want to I want to check it. So now <coughs> let's see about this one. Uh, I am I am able to get the content. So here I will use content and this one will be content ref. I will try to use the content ref which is of type element ref fine and here let's try to check the content ref whether I can able to get the uh, content height or not let's see whether we can able to get it or not so we are we are getting it as an undefined so for this reason what we need to do we need to mention this one in after next render so let's use the constructor and here I need to use the after next render and this takes a callback function I will try to express the I uh, will try to explain the code also content height is equal to this dot content ref content ref let's try to see whether we can able to get it in ng after we unit it i think i don't know let me try to check so here i will try to stop this one so now this one is view child in non ng after view unit let's see mm, so here we are able to get this element ref 
maybe this one let's see okay and here if i want to access this one yeah we are able to get it we are able to get this element also now if i want to access this one content ref dot native element dot scroll height let's try to check it whether we are able to get it or not i don't know this one so we are able to get this one mm. oh, we are able to get this this thing in this one so let me know in the comments how we are able to get it so whether this uh, local storage does it work local storage console.log of local storage local storage let's see this local storage whether it works or not okay so this one is channel name now web vital so i don't know from where this is all coming in the application in the local storage do we have these all the things okay so maybe we are using this uh, uh, ng server this one also maybe that because of the trace it is working normally these all will not work only in the after next run so what i was trying to tell you is whenever you want an action or some content you want to execute execute some logic when this uh, uh, server has been rendered completely means then you want to execute some logic in the browser means then we need to use this after next render and here we can use constant content height is equal to this dot content ref dot scroll height so here i can about get about this scroll height and uh, here i want to execute this console.log so console.log of content height in the browser is content height so now let's try to see the same output we are able to get here in this after next render or not so here we are able to get content height in the browser is 57 so we are able to get this one so this is how normally we will be using this after next render to execute so here you will be having a second option also there is nothing but face thing so you need to mention that oh, you can mention this face face sorry um, phases so you will be having uh, one option that is nothing but phases i don't know how we can use this one phases let's over here we will be able to see options after render options so we callback function is completed and yeah this is our callback function and uh, we need to provide and here object to manual cleanup so we don't have a phase so, yeah here we are having a phase and uh, here after render phase so you will be having early read read or write so we are using the read only we are using i think maybe we should not use it for the after next render i think so we should only use for the after render maybe according to me as my understanding so let's try to check in the after render we need to import this after render also so this one will uh, this after render will execute every time whenever any change in detection cycle occurs so here you can use um, the phase so here i think the phase will be there i think let's try to see if this one is also not showing means then i don't know so phase after render phase so maybe i think it should be available why, why it is not showing it as a empty i don't know so no, fine so what i what i was trying to tell you is so whenever you want to execute this code so here so we have defined a dom element example something like a paragraph content ref and we have applied some CSS style to this one. So we have imported after next render from the Angular code. In the constructor, we have used this after render to run browser only code. Example accessing scroll height after the view has been accessed. The after next render hook ensures that the scroll height properly is only accessed in the browser. On the server, this code is skipped preventing the runtime errors. So this one will be skipped preventing the runtime errors in the server. So now this is how we will be doing it. So we will be we will be working on this one like this one. So now when you so that's it yeah, that's it guys about this one. So now the and that's how you are servers compatible components in Angular 19. This ensures your app works beautifully across both the server and browser environments. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more Angular tips and updates thing. So hope you understand about this concept. So if you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. I will try to give the reply. Thank you.